privileges uh, or uh, should I call this one different branches. So last Friday we were able to talk about demonology, the characteristics of Satan itself, the demon itself. So I hope um, we have we were able to work out that one. And parang din ako at ang mga adventists na yun, nag-self-quarantine na kayo, di ba? Nag-declare na ng lockdown sa mga sarili nila. But let's report them to be here next Friday. Amen? So as before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify and magnify you, O Lord. We adore you, we praise you, O God. Thank you for this wonderful morning, O Lord, that you provided us, O Lord, to witness the world, to appreciate life itself, O Lord. Lord God, the whole world is struggling right now, O Lord. We have a battle to conquer, O Lord, to fight against, the Lord. But then we know that you are doing this for a purpose, O Lord, that this one could lead us to you, O Lord, to be closer to you, O God. Lord God, we know that we are physically, emotionally, and and unstable for this moment, O Lord. Our family, our relatives, our friends around the world, O Lord, are in danger as well, O Lord God. We are not happy that Libya is isolated with us at the moment and we don't have any peace at all, O Lord. But then, O Lord, we are so thankful for you, O God. Lord God, as we are going to study another wisdom or knowledge from you, O Lord, please guide us and help us, O Lord. And on my lips, O Lord, in order for your glory to be seen by the brethren, O Lord. This is all we ask, and Father God, Amen. So our topic for this morning focuses on chapter 6, which tells about the bibliology. Okay. Jeff, I said that I'm slide. So as we all know, bibliology is the study of the Bible itself. Who knows? It's a basic or it's the most important tool that we have at the church. Ano na dyan, Mai? Nag-lockdown din ba ang aking USB? So may USB mo, sa ang pangagawa tayo na? So talagang si Jen, may masyado siya nag-stop, no? Theology, um, chapter 6. Okay. So it's a basic tool of the church itself. It's not only for GCGF, but I think all of us, especially the Christians themselves, are using the Bible. So matagal pa si Sabana? Actually, mahabang topics natin, so go with me. We're gonna have this for three Fridays as well. So sabi na natin, bibliology comes from the word Greek word biblos, meaning Books, eh? Yeah. 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 So, I think first night focus in the title, chapter 6, Bibliology. So, we're going to talk about the Bible. It's not The Bible. Next. So, let's have a definition itself. Bibliology comes from the Greek word, sabi ko nga. A bit of meaning the books, and then logic to the study of the books of the Bible. It refers to the study of the Bible as the written word of the true and living God. So it says that it's a written word of the true and living God. It didn't say that it is written by the dead and false God. So be careful with that. As you can see, my slides were written on the red one. Kung nakaret siya, it's an important no. But the italicized, it is derived from the scripture itself. Amen? Next. The word the scripture is also used to refer to God's word. So another term for the Bible itself is scripture, which refers to God's word. The word comes from a Latin word which means writing. Ano ang isip ng writing? Sula. Okay? Next. What are the topics I'm going to talk about with theology? Number one, it's about the revelation of the word. Inspiration of the word, inerrancy, canonicity, interpretation, illumination, application, structure of the word of God, the unity of and diversity of the word. Diversity means differences or variation, purposes, variations, translations, and paraphrases. So we can go one by one to that one. So let's start with the revelation of the word. Revelation of the word means, what do you mean by revelation? It means to unveil or uncover. It is a process by where God makes himself known to mankind through scripture, Jesus Christ, miracles, visions, dreams, creation, etc. So, the Bible itself means what? It opens up or introduces God himself or Jesus Christ to the world, being what? 
being powerful one to his miracles and visions to the world. So we have a supporting verse here from Hebrews 11 verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the revelation itself, or the Bible to, refers to what? About faith to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Next. Also another supporting verse from Psalms 32 verse 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. God also sustains or continues to uphold the world and all things by the power of His word. So according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the light hand of the majesty on hand. The word of God is also revealed to conscience, Romans chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, and providence, God's sovereign dealings. So sovereign means what? The power. So it reveals the power of our dear Lord. Amen? So that means the time of revelation the word means what? To cover on and veil or to show himself as the powerful God. That's the reflection of the word of God. Next topic is about the inspiration of the word. What do you mean by inspiration? It is the process by which God used human authors to record his words through spirit inspired writing. Both verbal and binary. Verbal, it is a being, every word must be uttered by the word, by that by God. Binary means totality or the whole itself. So inspiration means what? Another term. A motivation itself, maybe. And something motivational behind. Kumbaga, you are inspired to write because somebody told you so or to do so. Amen. God is the source of biblical inspiration. So, walang ari um source ko si God lang. Ha? Some of the writers wrote down exactly what God said as He commanded them. So, it is a being. Though God used human authors, they are not the one who made it. They are inspired the Holy Spirit itself or by God. Amen. Amen. So, hindi to invent or what? So, ayon sa di ba yung mabasa? <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 36 verse 2 Take the arrow of the book and write there in all the words that I have spoken and to be against Israel. So parang um, it's a personal talk. It's like I am the one writing but somebody is murmuring behind me and then automatically na write na siya. Okay? Next, Jeremiah. Other writers wrote that they experienced or what God did. Yun nga, some apostles or writers experienced or wrote what they really experienced. Especially kay Paul. Tama? Sa letters. Lahat ng mga advices niya doon nakasulat doon sa mga tao. So dito, according to Revelation chapter 1 verse 19, Write the things which thou hast seen and things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. God inspired the words in the Bible and used approximately 40 different men. Sino ba itong 40 different men na ito? Assignment ko yan, okay? To write the scriptures, this man wrote his message over a period of 1,500 years. So napakahaba na ng panahon. And then, the perfect agreement of this writer is one reason proof that they were all guided by a single author. Again, they were all guided by a single author which is God. Inerrancy, another term which was used in the syllabi, means that the scriptures are without error, which means infallible, there's no false statement, walang hakahaka or invento. Whether they refer to theological, geographical, or historical issues. So, if you are going to read the Bible, may mga places siyang nakanggit and napaka-accurate ng mga information doon. Diba? Napakit ang Libya, locations, descriptions itself, yung mga troubles nila, especially yung kung ano mga uh, Israel, Israel is that time. So if you're gonna be from the geographical map the present time, talagang napaka-accurate yung mga information. So inerrancy means without error, yun lang yung tandaan nyo. For this reason, the scriptures are the final authority in matters of faith, doctrine, and practice. The, all, the word takes precedence over tradition, culture, and man-made topics. Precedence means what? Superior or higher among the manual or traditional cultures that we have. So, nothing beats the work itself. So, hindi porke na may doktrin na ginawa ang tao, mas mataas na siya sa doktrin na ginawa ng Diyos. So, still, the word of God is the highest form of doktrin that we have in the present time. Okay? Next. 
okay? Ito pa rin po, sabi niya, Any difficulties perceived in the accuracy of the text occur because of errors in our interpretation or our lack of understanding. So the interpretation of the word depends on how we understand. So let's be careful. It doesn't mean na ito yung sinabi sa iyo, yun na yung understanding mo. So we have to pray fervently that we could understand the words itself. Minsan kasi may mga words or terms na ginagamit ng Bible na hindi pinagtindihan. Yung may pag-explain na natin ang iba na yung thought kasi yung iba yung pagkakaintindi natin. Next. Canonicity of the word. So canonicity is the process of or refers to the church recognition. So, sa anong sabi ito? Church recognition is the acceptance of the church themselves. Of the divine origin and authority of the 66 books of the Bible. So, alam natin na may 66 divisions of Bible comprising the New and the Old Testament. So, the church did not determine which books were of divine origin, but recognized these books as being canonical canonical meaning that they were self-authenticated. Self-authenticated means they are original or original or true. I mean, walang copy, and then it's not false. The contents of these books verify the authentic word of God. So there are criteria kung paano ba kung ma, uh, ma determine it is canonized or not self-authentic. Next slide. There are different criteria that were mentioned on this that I given to me. Number one is the writer's authority. The book must be written by a legitimate and recognized apostle, prophet, etc. So if we go back to our previous Bible study, meron tayong mga background who wrote the author to whom it was written. Amen? There was a background for that one. But the most uh, famous one that I really remember always is my friend Paul. Okay? Second, the content. The book must contain internal evidence that it was inspired and authoritative. Number three, acceptance. No book of authenticity was doubted by any large number of churches was accepted. So majority as of now, regardless of the vision of Christianity, most of the churches are using the Bible in itself. Nagkakaiba lang ng tour or doctrine na pinakahawakan nila. Because maybe some of these groups are just adapting one verse, this one or adapting one verse. So nagkakaroon ng discrepancy. Though they have one reference, they are different from interpretations. Amen? So, there's a proof also the present Old Testament contain is reliable based on historical records such as the discovery of the Dead Sea. So, ito yung magpapatunay na talaga ang canonized or authentic ang ating Bible na hindi siya gawa-gawa. The Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947, they provided the Peru text from the 2nd to 1st centuries BC, all but one of the books, Esther, of the Old Testament. Other means of checking accuracy included the Septuagint, a complete Greek Old Testament translation dated 200 BC and the Latin voted by Jerome dated 8400. So, dami, over more than 5,000 manuscripts of the New Testament exist. So, I didn't have a research for this one. Sabi nga dyan, 5,000 manuscripts. So, napakarami talaga yung mag na the Bible is self authenticated or canonized. So, many of these copies are early dating from 8135 to the 8th century. Codex Sinaiticus, 4th century, Codex Vaticanus, 4th century. So, kung napapansin nyo, parang it's more of the Italy side, this one. Codex Alexandrus during the old time. And we're going to complete manuscripts of the New Testament. Next. Nakakasunod? Amen. Ito po yan, ha? Amen. Interpretation of the word. So, sabi natin, how do we interpret the word? We're after what the Bible says. Sabi na doon, we're asking the Bible, what is the content of the Bible? We are not asking why is the content of the Bible. B. Interpretation itself answers for the question of this for what? Ano ba ang sinasabi ng Bible? Okay? So let's define. It's the way the Word of God is understood. So paano mo ba siya naitindihan? The way you understand the Word. You should approach the Word without any presuppositions, traditions, or cultural influences. Which means presuppositions shouldn't have assumptions. Your personal opinion or your cultural background doesn't depend on how you interpret the Bible. Kasi once na nagpipad ka sa cultural belief mo or something, magkakamali ka na. You should read the Bible itself according to what it is written and what is being interpreted. Okay? Mamaya, nagbabasa tayo, ito kasi ang turo ng magulang mo noon. Your personal belief doesn't depend on how you interpret the Bible. Amen? 
Sabi nga, you must understand what the other means and how to or how it applies to your life. Napakaklaro. To properly interpret the word, you should study it as a whole, compare scripture with, with scripture, study the historical, cultural context, study by its content, by books, chapters, paragraphs, and words. So, napakaklaro, we are not studying just a single verse. Because a single verse can be interpreted like nothing. Yung pala, mamaya, the, first, the last statement was good, but the initial statement was bad. So let's be careful with that one, that we should be studying the whole chapter, not study it one more installment, okay? So there's a study or science that teaches the principles of interpretation, which serve as hermeneutics. Malakot talaga siya. Hermeneutics seeks to answer, sabi ko, to question what the Bible says and what it means. So sabi dyan, napakalaro mo ba what the Bible says and what it means. It always answers the question what, not why, where, or when. Second time na yung mga statements na yun. So illumination of the word refers to the word of the spirit that enables a word again to to understand and interpret that truth. So the word, the way how I understand the word illumination is that one, imagine a glass, a transparent glass. Merong ilaw. Okay, the light passes through the glass, not illuminate, not transpire. So that's how I see the word is being illuminated to yourself. Then the, the light comes into yourself and you'll be enlightened. Okay, so pwede mag illuminate, makikita talaga dyan, just as reflection. So kahaba ito na scripture na supporting verse natin. But at the, as it is written, I had not seen nor or heard, neither have entered into the heart of a man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. Next. Okay. Believers are commanded to what? To study, study to show thyself, a prophet to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly defining the word of truth. So we are obliged to study the word of God. Sabi pa dyan, God has provided a special, special teacher. Who is this special teacher that he was referring? Let's cover it one. To help you when you study his word. So when he was living, of course, he was able to share the word of God. But then, upon his departure, namatay siya, he asked the followers that there will be a special, a special teacher that will teach them. And who is this one? The special teacher that he is referring to is the Holy Spirit himself. Okay? Kasi nga, ang word, something that illuminates in you, sabi natin, if the word is already with you, the Holy Spirit resides in you or lives in you. The Holy Spirit, what? Illuminates inside of you. Next year, right? So another supporting verse from chapter 16, uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So napakaklaro. So it was written in the book of Acts chapter 2, regarding the coming of the Holy Spirit himself. So sabi niya, through the Holy Spirit, you receive a special supernatural ability to understand God's word. So interpreting or illuminating the word of God is considered as a supernatural power. Napakaganda, or ability. Sabi ba dyan, according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, that the anointing which you have received of him abided in you and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Amen. Application of the word. So, na illuminate tayo, God will himself illuminate, and you are able to interpret. Now, let's go to the application. What do you mean by application? It means to allow the Bible to speak to you. Personally, educating, encouraging, convicting, and guiding your life. So, ang nangyayari na, di ba, ang iba sa atin, we have this planner. Every day, we try to write what we want to do. But then, in Christian life, we are using this Bible as an, 
application or what the guiding tool for us to be living on what he really wants us to live with the righteous way okay apply the bible means you act upon the word of god so you mean you have to do action for that one not just learn so it is that it's not a stagnant knowledge but it's an application of knowledge or wisdom regarding the bible revelation should result in transformations through change in your life so transformation means what change to change it is a linear a genuine change in your life. It's not a big change or false change to your life. So we have a supporting verse from James chapter 1, verse 30 to verse 25. But yet does not doers of the word and not hearers only. So yun lang yung soil and so forth. So we are the doers of the word. We are not hearers only. So the application depends on us. Bahala na tayo kung we are just going to have it or not. So, wait your mind. So, I prepared some quiz, maybe diagnostics or what. So I prepared two sets from the boys and the girls so that we can absorb this one. Madali lang to kasi na pagdaanan na natin. May ask the girls to show you uh, come closer to each other. Social distancing. Ah, social distancing. So may social distancing. Pahalo na kayo mag-disagree kung sino ba ang ating magiging video for group. Jemai, what we need some board, It's not a measurement of your ABCD. There are four choices and two choices. Jemai, what can you do? First line. Okay. Okay, Since ikaw ang mauna dyan. Hindi ka lang pag-agree kayo. Pag-agree kayo kung anong sabi nyo. Okay lang isa lang. Kasi we have four choices in every question. A, B, C, D. Oo. Multiple choice. Yeah. Multiple choice na. Hindi pwede kasi kaya lang isa lang pag-raise. Kasi ang multiple choice na lang answer. That's why I asked you to make closer. Oh, boys versus girls. Lapit kayo ng closer. Sige na for a while. Then mag social distancing kayo later. Bawal mag coaching ha? Kasi? Diyan na hindi ka kasali. Sige, ako mo hindi siya cross for the next slide ha? Okay, mapinutin mo na. First question. What are the covenant divisions of the word? There are eight. Girls. The Old Testament and the New Testament of the Enai. There are B. Books of law and the Old Testament. There is C. Commandments of the New Testament and the New Testament. There are B. All of the above. Raise your answer. Hindi ma, good job. Girls, team kayo, team kayo, hindi kayo individual. Ayan. Nauna ang boys. Ay, ganito na lang. Pag tulila ko lang 3 seconds, kailangan sa may kayo mag-raise. Anyway, okay. Girls. No, no. Sabay na kayo. So let's have, so what's your answer letter? A. A. So what's the correct answer, Jemai? So the correct answer is letter A. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Next. Very good. All one. So let's rationalize. The structure of the word. The two major sections of the word are Old and New Testament. The word testament means what? A covenant or an agreement. The Old Testament records God's original covenant agreement with man. And then the New Testament records the new covenant made by God through His Son, Jesus Christ. So sabi natin, ang word is considered a testament, an agreement. Amen? Next. So tama kayo doon. So what was the subject of these two agreements? They both concerned restoring sinful man to right relationship with God. So it leads to what? Salvation. So during the Old, in the Old Testament, man is considered already sinful, but in the practices was different from the New Testament. Let's not discover that one later. So that means, sabi dito, under God's agreement in the Old Testament, God's sacrifices of animals, so this was the old ways. 
So whenever someone committed sin, he was going to slaughter an animal, the best animal to offer, so that his sin will be redeemed. Okay? Or will be forgiven. This was a symbol of the blood sacrifice Jesus Christ would provide under the new agreement with God. So if you say, nung dumating na New Testament, it was already a revelation of the life of Jesus Christ to redeem the sins of the people. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, a final sacrifice for sin was made. So the death of Jesus Christ was the final one. Next. But Christ being come on high priest of good things to come, the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say not of this building, neither with the blood of goats and cows. So wala na. My old practice and new practice, these are referring to the Old Testament. Next. Di ko na siya mabasahin, just take a glance of this one. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot of God, purge your conscience from ten verse to serve the living God? That's from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 15. Sabi dito, both testaments are the word of God, and we must study both in order to understand God's message. So it means we are not going to disregard because it's old, because it's new. We are going to consider this both because they are what? Referring to the revelation of the life of Jesus Christ. Okay? Another question. Okay? <laughs> question. Into how many books in the Bible divided? Into how many books in the Bible divided? Letter A, two. Letter B, four. C, 66. D, wait, ma'am. I'm putting it up, I'm not it. Ma'am, just wait for my people. One, two, three, they place together. Okay? No, it's okay. Hindi siya pa unahan, ha? Kasi sasabay kayo. Kasi pa makukuyahan. So, the correct, ah, uh, sige. Raise your answer. One, two, three. What's the correct answer, Jemai? Are you saying letter C? The correct answer is letter C. So, very good. Two points for both of you. Next. May point mo kayo after. Next question. If the Old Testament has 39 books, how many books are included in the New Testament? Oh. Grabe ang girls. Napaka cooperative. 835, 16, 27, raise your answer. Correct answer? Di ba madali lang? 627. So, 3 points each. Next. Kala niyo madali lang kaya. Next. So let's check if the answer or answers are correct. Divisions by books. The Bible is further divided into six books. Sabi natin. Total six, six books. Old Testament there are 39, New Testament 27. So each each book is divided into chapters and verses. So clearly, it was not divided into paragraphs. Although the content of each book is the word of God, the divisions into chapters and verses was made by the man to make it easier to locate specific passages. It would be very difficult to find a passage in the books were for one long paragraph. So the book is like a story, you know? Hindi siya naka-form into paragraphs kasi napakahaba ng passages kung kanya. Ang hirap siya pag-aralan mo interpret Okay? So they were divided into verses and chapters. Okay? So napakahirap naman siguro na locate the uh, Genesis paragraph 1, page 29. Maraming ibang hirap, di ba? Okay. The books of the Old Testament. Na tayo. Fill in the missing word. The books of the Old Testament are divided into four major groups. Four major groups of the Old Testament. Law, history, prophecy, and what? Letter A, poetry. B, kalahin mo nalil ang gospel. C, grabe naman si Sisora. Spoil your darkness, B. Ikaw na Sisora. Letters, these songs. Oh, my pero this is a note. This is a uh, for the others as well to learn. <laughs> okay, any coaching from the girls or any people who did not from your score? Okay. Oh, uh, what's the answer? Raise your answer. Huh? What's your answer, boys? B. Correct answer is what? A. Poetry. So, 3 points for the girls, boys, talo kayo ng ato. 
Our next is an attempt. So we have four major groups. No history, poetry, and prophecy. That's according to the syllabi that was given to me. And okay. I'll Next. How many books of law are identified in the Old Testament? How many books of law are identified in the Old Testament? A5, B8, C7, B9. Raise your hands, sir. Go. Okay, good. Oh, Girls, okay. Three, two, one. Ano grabe naman ang huli kayo? Ano Christian boys? Ah, Didactes. Wala. May balik na sila. Kaya yung answer? Five. Five. Girls, sobrang tagal nyo, you are the color the most. Point for the boys. So four points, both team. Next. So na natin tayo yung concept pa. The books of law. There are five books of law, namely Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So you know all these things. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So ang topic nito, these books record the creation of man, obviously from the book of Genesis, the world by God and the early history of man. Kaya ang book of law. tell how God raised up the nation of Israel as people to which he contributed himself to the nations of the world and record the laws of God. So these are the rules that we have followed during the old times. So, napaka famous dito yung Ten Commandments from Exodus chapter 20, verse 15 to 17. And follows by this one, Great Peace of All Command from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Ano ang masabi ng Deuteronomy? Chapter 6, verse 5. Anyone? It's about, it says that, And thou shalt love the Lord the God with all, Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And then what's the second greatest commandment from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18? It's about loving thy neighbor. Okay, that's the first commandment was to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all thy mind. Second greatest commandment is love thy neighbor. Okay, yun lang yung summary na. Next question. Which of the following does not, does not, okay, belong to the books of history of the Old Testament? Hindi na masali. A. Revelation B. Joshua Wait for my cue ma'am, kapulit niyo ma'am, maging tiyak ka C. Judges D. Ezra 1, 2, 3, go Oh, late na naman Right answer? A. Revelation So, all got the correct answer So, 5 points each So, the book of history Oh. There are two books of history in the Old Testament. So, sabi sabi natin ba sa akin, what are the two books of history in the Old Testament? Come on. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 and 2 First and 2 Kings, First and 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Ezra. So, what are the topics of these books? The books of history cover a thousand years and history of God's people in Israel. So, it's the historical background it is talking about. Sabi niya, Jemad, balik ka excited na next week. Naturally, we do not tell everything what happened. So it was not detailed actually. But we record the major events and show the results of both following and ignoring God's law. So napaklaro. Next, next question. For the sixth point. Book of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon belongs to which division of the Old Testament? Oh. Pastor, may inay. Books of Law, Books of Prophecy. Jem, may ibang buta. Poetry, History, Go. What's the answer? Correct answer is letter C. Books of Poetry. Pagkaya pa rin yung point. Six points each. So the Books of Poetry, sabay-sabay natin basahin. There are five Books of Poetry. Jobs, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. So, anong topic dito? They are about the worship books of God. So, the common one or the most popular one is about the Psalm 23. Parang anong sabi mo? The Lord is my shame, my shepherd, my shepherd, not one. Yeah, that's the beginning. Yun ang tandaan ko doon. Pero ma, may kilang siya for verses like 19. What is the most famous one? Next question. How many divisions of prophetical books are there in the Old Testament? Oh, yeah, no, it's like that. A, A, B, 10, C, 2, B, too many to mention. So how many divisions of prophetical books are there in the Old Testament? A, 10, 2, too many to mention. Go. 3, 2, 1, 
and the need of God's word refers to deeper spiritual truths which are not to not so easy to understand. I think we have some napakadaling iswalo, di ba? So simple lang siya salvation. So it's like we are focusing in the love of God and we are being saved. But for the name of God's word is more of the correctional or one to prince. Okay? Tantaan niya yan. Next. In the natural world, there is nothing wrong with milk for newborn baby. Tama? Tama hindi. The same is true in the spiritual world. When you are first born again, you should desire the milk of God's word. As newborn babes, desire the sensory milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Next. That's from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Next. But there comes a time in the natural world when a baby must start to eat solid foods. If he is to mature physically, it is also true in the spiritual world there is plenty he must move on from the milk of God's word to the milk. So, in the natural world, especially sa mga medically inclined people and then even sa parents, the ideal time for a child to be given a solid food is a isa, six months. Okay? Pero ang introduction ng food na solid is isa isa. For us to know ano bang allergy ng bata. So for the six months, at ang baby kasi, you feed the baby according to his demand. My reasons kung bakit kung iyan ang bata is either gutom, masama na rin, may kumagas ang nanggap. But then, ang pagkain ng bata ng baby is according to his want to demand. Kung umiyak yan, automatically gusto niyang magkatas. So same is the word of God. Habang bata pa, painumin mo lang, painumin yung pangin niya absorb. And then there was a time na ready na siya for the solid food which is the meat. But then sabi nga na after two years. So ang sisma siguro pili mo siya kaya na nang extended ng two years. The same siguro sa bilip ng tao yan. Kung hindi pa siya ready, you have to extend and then makita mo na yung maturity and then you have to feed the meat. Okay? Next. Next. Ano ba yung steps from moving the milk of the word to the meat of the word? There are three steps. Number one is to receive. Number two is to be obedient. Number three is what? To search for the meat. Bili tayo sa receive. So sabi nga natin, being a baby or babe, we must receive the milk. We must gain and understand to the basic principles of the word of God. So receive, receive lang tayo, tanggap lang lang tayo, tanggap. Next is to be vision. What do you mean by vision? You have to apply the word to yourself. You have to obey the word of God. Sabi nga dyan, dyan po dyan. So, Cardinal Christians do not obey what they learn in the milk of God's word. So they are not able to mature. So, ibig sabihin, hindi sila naging obedient. The Bible teaches not is enough to hear this word, but you must also act upon it obediently. So, sabi nga natin, we should be a do, we should be doers, not only hearers of the word. Next, the third step is to search for the meat. So we are already mature. We are ready to accept everything. So, ando na tayo sa meat process. Hindi na tayo pwede mag-backlog sa my baby side. Kasi we obey already. We receive, we obey, and then now we are searching for longing for the meat itself. Sabi dyan, in the natural world, chewing meat requires more physical effort than drinking milk. Yeah. Solid na yan. We need physical mastication. So, mumuya ka na dyan for you to swallow. You have to act now physically and spiritually. The same is true in the spiritual. Discovering the meat of God's word requires more spiritual effort than living on the milk of the word. Okay? Next! The unit of the word. So, meron na tayo sinasabi dito. The unit of the word depends on what? The content and the theme. Next, yan ay? So, ang content, ibig sabihin, it only reveals the life of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Bible evolves on the life of Jesus Christ. Restore the sinful man to salvation. Yun ay tandaan natin. Hindi ko na siya pangalas na ang isa-isa. Sabi dyan, Writer spoke on the side subjects with the harmony from the first book of Genesis to the last book of Revelation. Therefore, the writers record the message under his direction and inspiration. For this reason, the content of the Bible is united. He is an author but inspired by the one God itself. Okay? So what is the main theme of the Bible? The Bible is united by major theme from beginning to end, the Bible reveals God's special forms which is summarized in the book of Ephesians. So it's about the purpose of the God. That everything that's happening in our life, that will happen in our life, depends on His will. Okay? 
So you must find that. Next. <laughs> well done, please. So sabi dyan, the Bible reads, reveals the mystery of God's plan, which is the unifying theme of the Bible. So God's plan is the main theme of the Bible, the unifying theme. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of sinful mankind. Sabi rin kanina, Jesus explained how the Old Testament are centered on Him. Okay? Next slide. Again, unity in theme and unity in content. So what was the key Jesus gave them to understand the scriptures? The fact that it is made to focus on Him. It's all about Him. Tama? Next. So we got this conclusion. The Old and New Testament both tell the story of Jesus. The Old Testament prepares us for His coming, and the New Testament tells us how it happened. This unites the Bible in one major theme. The people who look forward to Christ's sacrifice in Old Testament times were saved from their sins through faith in God's promise. Everyone who looks back to it having fulfilled in Jesus Christ is saved in the same way through faith that it happened just as God promised. So, napakagano yan. Next. The diversity of the word. So, all you have to understand about the diversity of the word or the Bible is a variety. It has many topics, many moods. So, kung babasahin mo tayo, well, iba't iba yung genre ng book natin. Merong sad na mood, merong happy, merong love story itself din. Tama? So, yun lang yung sinasabi dyan about the diversity of the word. So, may different types of writing, history, poetry, prophecy, letters, adventure, parables, miracles, and love. Sorry. Diversity means variety or difference sa pagkakaiba. So, hindi nagpo-focus ang Bible sa happy-happy lang. Okay? Next. Versions, translations, for pages. So, all we have to do or to know about the Bible, it was written before, originally, in three languages. Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. Maybe it's like the same with the Arabic one na hindi natin maitindihan. So, noodles. Okay? Or, sabi namin mula isa mga lokal. Versions are translations of copies of the original manuscripts. So the from early men, so the necessity to translate the Bible. So versions we have these present versions right now for us to be to understand. The new and the common version is the King James version. Okay, and then I don't know exactly because a version sometimes also depends on the language being used. Okay, for us to understand or for the groups to understand, they created themselves by the language or dialects they have in their towns. Like in the Philippines, I think meron pa rin mga Ilocano. So from the main language Filipino, ang mga tribes or mga different places created themselves the translation of the version themselves. Okay? Next. Two main types of versions of the Bible. We have the translation and the paraphrase. Translation is the common one. So we don't have one in the different languages. Paraphrase, we don't have that much. We are not using that one. But according to pag translation, sabi natin, it's a word by word translation. Word by word. So that thought is still there and it's derived from the original. So maganda gamit yung translation because it was derived from the original itself. Compared to paraphrase, it's like, sabi dyan, does not attempt to translate word for word, but translate thought by thought. Paraphrase means it's going beyond the message. So, parang sinasabi mo dyan na it's only the personal interpretation of the author itself. So, according to my research, based on my research, ESR is considered a paraphrase. It's not a translation, it's a part easy to read version. And then, I've read also that the common one or the famous example of this paraphrase type of the Bible is what you call the message by Eugene. Peterson. So, hindi ko na siya nabasa ng legal, pero yun ang common na ano. Even the good news Bible is considered easy to read. Applicable ba na gamitin ang paraphrase version of the Bible or translation? What is the most preferred one? Translation. Yeah, very good. Why? Because paraphrase, niya already is already what? The thoughts or the concept of the someone who wrote it. So, it's, it's ano na, kumbaga, Minanali lang yung iparating yung message ng Bible, but it's not exactly what is it. It's only my own opinion or my own understanding about the Bible. So if you have time and I have time also, I'm going to read the message by Eugene Patterson. Next! Purpose of the Word. So, kinopress ko na siya, matahaba siya. Prophet of the for doctrine, brings me in the gospel message, brings eternal life, basis for eternal judgment, brings the born again experience. Next! 
Praise the Lord for process, okay? Mahat na siya. Praise the Lord for the food, brings healing, comfort, brings spiritual nourishment, brings answered prayer. Next. Ayan lang siya. Tuloy tuloy na tayo. Words, brings with one. Okay. Ayan. Tuloy tuloy na. Ayan lang yun. So, the last part, lang na tayo matapos. This is now the last part of the Bible study. Our responsibility for the word. What is our responsibility? Yes, to make it out to the world. So being believers, because the word of God is so important, so the eternal destiny, so it's a key passage for us to know about the salvation, the eternal life, we should spread it to the other people. Salvation is individualized, but then if you were able to share it, share it by your own grace or by your own sake. Uh-huh. Next. We also have a responsibility for spreading a powerful word to God. So it's our responsibility to spread the word. It's not for our own selves only. Next. Thank you. It God bless us all. Hello, girls. So it was 10, 12, boys, ang panalo. May interview kayo mamaya. So ang interview natin is celebration of your team. Isang box na. May talong po. Congratulations, boys, girls, for your husbands. Any questions for additional book? This is this uh, refers to me uh, as a Christian and a newborn uh, Christian. Uh, you know that I married an Ephesian priest, so I was born, my father was a Protestant. And uh, I got my answer now in your uh, Bible story is illumination. Uh, if you see the maximum numbers of Ephesian priest, ang dami dami kontra sa akin, bakit ba isa? Isa bihila? Hindi. They don't believe in Jesus because Jesus, they said, is the Son of God. Ako bagong Kristiano, na bagong baby, huh? I was able to find. Because the Holy Spirit was with me. They said, if you were baptized, the Holy Spirit is with you. So, as the Holy Spirit is with me, why in my ear say illumination? Isa lang word na rinig ko. I, I, I heard it from Brother Mar- Mario. It was... Uh, the 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 I mean God uh I don't know God incarnated to Jesus. God incarnated Jesus. I was a born I was a Christian, I was this is very good. Illumination. The Holy Spirit told me the word incarnation, where in God incarnated Jesus, and I I have also concluded from Sister Grace that God incarnated to Jesus. That's why Jesus is a man hundred percent but sinless. So God, and then after Jesus incarnated, uh, ascended, ascended after he died, Jesus asked for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is still Jesus. Jesus is still God. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is one. Bakit sila ang dami dami nila, hindi nila matumbo? Me, I'm a new baby, bakit natumbo ko? Because the Holy Spirit is with me. This is what we call illumination. And I don't understand the meaning, kasi nga, some groups are really just pointing or getting one specific verse to, to highlight yeah. their belief. Like for us, we have this GCGF uh, foundational um, scriptural verse wala, for our foundation verse. And if you're going to read the background, you have to explain also what's mm-hmm. yung poem chapter. Sabi nga kanina dyan, we are not just studying the Bible according to the verse, single verse, but you have to compare verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Mm-hmm. So ganun yun. Kaso lang hindi ko rin naintindihan kasi napaka-faithful talaga nila doon sa doktrin oh. na tinuturo sa kanila. Oo, oh, so, talaga may sila naman sila. Bakit ano, isang Biblia, isang Holy Spirit, yeah. isang Diyos, pero bakit may iba ang pa-interpretation? Oh. 
nasabi ko ng time na eh. Because di ko yung eh, nag-judge na sila. Yeah. Kung anong pinaniwalaan nyo na. Yeah. Close na. Yeah. Wala na. This opposition. This na lang yung assumptions. Pero may doktrina sila pa. So even if di ba pressing in this case, so kung hindi bumadap sa doktrina, why they were not able to... But not every one of them are carrying Bibles whenever they go to church. Hindi oh. ko yung nakita sa kanila. Uh, Maganda kasi yung sinabi mo na uh, scripture by scripture is support pa. Yeah. Tapos kung magbasa ka, hindi lang doon sa isang scripture lang. Before ka mag-concentrate doon, basahin mo muna yung chapter 1 o chapter 2 ka, yes. pati chapter 3. Yes. Para dyan, tapos kuha pa rin sa ulit sa mga reference, hindi ka mag, uh, ano lang, punto lang na yun lang, yun lang, tapos na. Putol na eh. Parang sila mo sa karami na ako nandiyan yan pa. Do not judge. Yan, doon ka lang. Oh, okay to. Yeah, pa rin niya kung ano. Pero kung basahin mo yung isang chapter, hindi pala, pwede pala tayo mag ano. Pero yun ba, ano nga nang pupunto, para maintindihan mo, yung, yung get out the box, in yes. the box, para yes. maintindihan mo anong laman. Yes. No, huwag lang, huwag lang buon. Yes. No? Yes. Para mag magandang lambas ka dyan. Ah, ito pala yung intindihan. Yan ang point. Yes, God, napakaganda man, uh, uh, hindi pa. So again, um, sa sabi nga doon, our understanding about the Bible depends on how we really understand the word itself. So let's pray for Bethany. Kasi the moment na nabasa natin siya, kung hindi na siya maintindihan, mahirap talaga struggle because let's be careful in sharing the word on how we share it because mamaya niya, baka iba pala yung pagkakaintindi natin sa sinasabi na natin. Okay? So it's a big responsibility na share on the word. Know that the authority is also is already given to us. Let's be cautious in sharing so. Yes. Uh, then, some versions, let's be careful as well from, from the translation and the paraphrase itself. May incentive na ako kasi ganito yung tinamon natin pag naiintindihan ko, ito yung interpretation ko, which lead sa ibang doktrina. So, ang maganda, sabi ko, why not, ito yung pinanawalaan ko, ito yung interpretation ko, why not consider also at this five? Oh, kumukuha ko dito. Ito yung interpretasyon ni John MacArthur. Ito yung interpretasyon ni Paul Wasser. Ito yung interpretasyon ni Johnny Piper. Ito yung interpretasyon. Magkuha mo ngayon, aha, maraming kang pagbabasiyan. Ah, dito. Oh, ito. Tama. Ito tama. Kasi dami, dati, isampol ko lang ha, para ano. Dati, sabi na may, may pre-rapture. Meron na uh, may pre-tribulation. Meron naman may tribulation. Meron din post-tribulation. Kami ko. Tapos, check mo yung mga verse niya, tama, nandun sa Biblia. So, i-compare mo itong tatlo, meron, ay yung tatlong tatlo para nag-exist. Hindi lang isa ang dapat. Meron na niwala sa isa lang eh. So, kaya, ngayon, kung ah, meron kaya, before pang ano, may, may main tribulation, may pre-tribulation, may post, meron pala. Ayan, kasi kinukuha mo yung lima, at least lima. Ang tumakuan mo, maintindihan mo. Huwag kang mag-intindi sa iyong sarili lang. Siguro ito, majority ko, siguro 3 out of 5 is the same. Doon ka ba makukonsider? Yeah. 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 Okay. There is a verse for that one. Sinari, nakatingin na ma'am. Yes. Ay, <laughs> 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 okay. Ah, sige ma'am. Uh, there is a verse for this. I got it from you too. John 16.13 refers to the word of the Spirit that enables a born-again Christian to understand and interpret the Scriptures. So, dapat nasa piso po ang pag-born again. Again, sabi nga doon, our special feature is the Holy Spirit himself. Yeah. So, no one can teach us but the Holy Spirit himself. So, any additional, mahaba na tayo. Mm -hmm. Kung marami yung talong, pwede tayo mag-one on one so taas. Wow. <laughs> Kasi may pwede mo naman ako. <laughs> okay, I think wala na. Mahaba na. Pasensya na kung mahaba tayo. Okay. So, let's wait. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the heavenly wisdom. Lord, thank you for enlightening us. Lord, thank you for the encouragement. Oh God. Lord God, uh, please never depart us from your word, O oh Lord, for the Bible says the word. Please help us to be this our personal and spiritual basis, O oh Lord, for us to live um, righteously according to your cross, O oh Lord. Please all of us, may you for God. Amen. 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 Amen.